Over the years, I have learned a few things about working with wildlife. Probably the first thing I learned is never eat yellow snow. And the second thing is never stand underneath a roost of bats. Welcome to EnviroTube. Today I'm at Gordon, 15 kilometres from the heart of Sydney, and just over here I have a colony of grey-headed flying foxes. It's absolutely amazing. There are literally thousands of these animals here. Living next to thousands of grey-headed flying foxes, well, you really have to love wildlife to do it because, to be honest, they are quite noisy and they are a little bit smelly. But really, what an absolute privilege to have on your balcony, be able to step out and check out these fantastic creatures whenever you want. Grey-headed flying foxes do suffer a lot by living in urban conditions. One of the big problems is netting. A lot of people use netting to protect their fruit trees. That's fine if you know what you're doing. But if you use netting that is black in colour and loose, to give you an example, uh, Animal Rescue Services, just one group, uh, Sydney Metropolitan Rescue Service, had over 400 calls to rescue trapped animals in uh, badly constructed netting. So it really is a massive problem. Now this is an example of the sort of netting you should use. It should be white, and when you stretch it over trees, it should be taunt. One really good thing about the New South Wales election that's happening on the 26th of March is that all government and uh, opposition parties have pledged to, so, uh, to stop issuing licences for farmers to shoot grey-headed flying foxes and to actually subsidise the cost of putting netting over uh, farmers' crops. I think in 2011, it's fairly 19th century to be dealing with wildlife with shotguns. 2011 has been a very bad year for flying foxes. That's because it's been raining so much. The rain washes the pollen and the uh, nectar out of the flowers, and in fact, these bats, they're close to starvation. Uh, flying foxes are really important parts of the environment. They're fantastic for pollination, and they're also fantastic for dispersing seeds great distances. They actually fly hundreds of kilometres. So you can imagine, they eat a seed here, they excrete it over there, that is really, really good for genetics. Bats must have the worst PR agents. Not only are they associated with Dracula, which is nuts, but they're also known to be a carrier of a virus called Lysavirus. Now, Lysavirus can kill humans, but it's very, very rare. In fact, your chances of uh, dying of Lysavirus well, it's more likely the monitor that you're watching this YouTube clip on is going to explode and kill you. It's not really a risk. Well, I think the flying foxes are a bit annoyed that I mentioned the Lysavirus. You can hear them chatting away. Look, the risk is low, but if you do find an injured bat, you've got to be very careful, and you really should call an animal rescue service and make sure children go, don't go near them. Well, it's a small world, isn't it? And here's Tim Pearson, well-known uh, bat enthusiast.